I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and I just picked up my uh, gear that I'm going to need for this trip, and I'm heading over to Alpine. I'm clearing the uh, trail leading up to the parking area for the uh, Hannigan Trailhead. Well, I'm in the Blue Range Primitive here at the Hannigan Meadow Trailhead, and I'm ready to head out on my adventure. Stay tuned. I hope you follow along. Starting my adventure. I'm going to go ahead and get on uh, number 73, which is going to be the uh, steeple trail. Well, I'm about uh, almost a mile in, and let me tell you something. It definitely is rugged. You're going over a lot of trees, and uh, you're going to be getting off trail. I'm coming to some uh, clearings here and uh, keep on heading out. So I stopped to take a look at where I'm at on the map and I'm at a fork. So I think I'm going to go head east on a primitive trail and it's going to parallel Grand Creek. Grand Creek and I'm just paralleling it heading east. cabin here or at least someone who was trying to build a cabin My first base camp here in the uh, Blue Range Primitive. I decided I'm going to sleep out under the stars tonight. I got my poncho on the ground there, air mat, and then my uh, mobile mummy uh, sleeping bag. So uh, I'm at my base camp uh, first night, and I have my socks hanging over the fire there because I got I got them wet doing some uh, creek crossings today. So I'm going to work on the socks, and then I'm going to go ahead and work on my shoes. They also got wet too. Morning, day two of my adventure here in the Blue Range Primitive. Just started a fire. It was a cold evening last night. Got into the upper 30s. Right now it's about probably uh, lower 40s. I'm going to go ahead and get some chow. I'm really hungry. Again, last night was pretty quiet. I did hear some turkey in the backdrop. Um, and about midnight last night, I woke up with some real bad cramps in my hamstrings, both legs. And that was probably due to me not uh, getting enough electrolytes in my body. I was drinking, but I wasn't uh, resupplying it with the salts and the minerals. And I have those packets. So I'm gonna rectify that today, make sure I take those because uh, those cramps were pretty bad. So uh, they lasted for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I was able to kind of work them out and, uh, and I'm fine now. So that was a very strenuous hike yesterday, uh, getting to this point over here. Uh, did a lot of bushwhacking off the trail because the trail is very difficult to follow with the down trees, etc. And then I was doing a lot of creek crossings with Grant's, uh, Grant Creek, uh, so my socks and my boots got wet. And uh, last night I was drying out my boots and my socks over the fire. So I'm going to go ahead and have some chow, uh, do some uh, more videos, some more pictures. So before I head out, I'm going to be uh, doing some first aid on my uh, leg here. I sustained some cuts yesterday coming over here. Again, I was doing a lot of bushwhacking. So I'm putting some uh, antiseptic liquid band-aid on it. Works very well. Puts a clear coat on it. Uh, prevents any type of dirt from getting in there, as well as uh, preventing any type of infection. Good for small cuts. Anything larger, you don't want to utilize this. But it's something definitely you should have in your first aid kit. Making sure my fire is totally extinguished. So I'm traversing this. Uh, hill here and 
doesn't look like it, but that's one heck of a steep drop. I go off. I'm at uh, Moonshine Park here in the uh, Blue Range Primitive. And uh, just got up here and taking a little break. Beautiful area. A lot of uh, flat ground here. Um, green grass. No water that I see up here. You're going to have to go down to Grants Creek. But uh, beautiful area to set up a base camp. So I'm digging out the fire pit uh, here, get some of the dirt out on the inside here so it sits a little lower. And I found this uh, bone from an elk I'm utilizing. Here you have my uh, second base camp, and I uh, just finished getting the fire pit all set up there, and uh, set up the tent, and I'm seeing it's going to be some bad weather tomorrow, so I'm going to be prepared. Well, day two is coming to an end, and uh, Went up to uh, Moonshine Park today. It was a nice little trip up there. Very open area, beautiful area. Set up a base camp. Problem is, is that you got no water up there. You have to go down to uh, Grant, Grant's Creek here. So, uh, but definitely a place to visit if you ever come to the uh, Blue Range Primitive. Well, it's about uh, 8, 30 or 20, 30 hours. And uh, just saw my uh, first Mexican gray wolf. He's across the creek there. And I was shining my uh, headlamp around and I caught his eyes. And uh, looks like he's kind of tracking along the creek slowly, looking back here at me. This is a video from my Fleur TK Scout after I saw the Mexican gray wolf. I'm scanning the perimeter of my base camp to ensure that there's no other wolves around. Good morning, day three. Last night, heard a lot of howling. And uh, that Mexican gray wolf that I saw was right over the, you know, less than 50 yards, less than 40 yards from my camp. But uh, he was, uh, or she, was uh, curious, uh, was uh, kind of watching me for probably about five minutes, maybe, maybe not that long, and I had my headlamp on it so I can see the color of its eyes. It had like an orange and kind of a green, kind of changed colors. Um, looked at me, uh, it was a large, large size. I would guesstimate it probably about 90 pounds, maybe, maybe 100 pounds, just from what I can see. Got a quick picture of it on my iPhone here. Came out grainy, but it's a picture of uh, the wolf taking off down the trail. And there's a trail over there, on that bank over there. And uh, I'm sure it was out looking for some food. So, not sure how today's gonna be. It uh, woke up with orange skies not orange now that old saying uh, red skies at night sailors delight red sky in the morning sailor take warning i'm expecting some rain today but we'll see uh, i'm gonna probably pick up and move my camp uh, down the way a little bit and uh, try to find a spot there and get set up for now i'm gonna have some chow start a fire uh, temperatures are probably probably in the mid to lower 40s right now it did get cold last night but my uh, mobile mummy, the Sierra Design Mobile Mummy, mo mobile mummy, <laughs> can't even talk, uh, kept me very warm. Glad I brought that uh, sleeping bag by. I did sleep out in the open on my uh, poncho, 
and uh, really nice. And I also was using my uh, climate uh, insulated uh, sleeping mat, which has that 4.4 R value, which I'm glad I brought that high R value and uh, definitely kept me warm last night. And I'm expecting today probably not to break, probably in the 60s, maybe because of this overcast. So I'm gonna have some chow and then uh, see if I can get back on the trail if it doesn't start raining. Still on the primitive trail, came across this uh, rock wall. Nice little four to five foot little pool there. Coming down from the uh, creek there. Wearing my uh, keen sandals there to do this uh, crossing here. Actually, I'm gonna keep them on for a little while because I got a few creek crossings I gotta do. My new base camp going into uh, night three. In this uh, open meadow here. And looks like we got some weather rolling in again. A little creek down my basement. It started to rain and the temperatures have dropped. So, um, perfect timing uh, in reference to getting this base camp set up. And I'll be able to see how the Hornet uh, works uh, during a rainstorm because I haven't been able to uh, test it out during a rainstorm. So this is a perfect time to do it. But once the rain stops, I'm going to go out and get some chow, maybe start a fire. I don't know if I'm going to get a fire going. It might be a cold camp tonight. Good morning. Day four of my adventure here in the Blue Range Primitive and it is cold probably the coldest temps that i've experienced i've been out here it kind of reminds me of my uh, gila wilderness adventure it got cold out there too temperature is definitely in the freezing mark sometime after midnight probably one o'clock it um i was awoken by thunder and then it started raining and it rained pretty good the water on the tent right now on the outside is frozen. Could have snowed last night, but the tent held up very well. I'm warm and I'm dry inside the tent here. And in a little bit, I'm gonna get out and try to start a fire, see how that works, uh, especially with the rain uh, and the uh, freezing temps, but we'll see. So stay tuned, um, we can get some more videos and some pics today. All right, so I put my watch outside and you can see that the uh temp is about or the current temp is about 38 but it got below that last night here you can see the uh, frost on my tent cooking up some breakfast on day four gonna have some uh, ramen noodles today that's why I brought this uh, large pot by Evernew so I could cook my ramen noodles in it a lot easier it's wider it's easier to put the noodles in than a smaller cup um, before I handle any food I always sanitize my hand before every meal that way is not to contaminate the food or to get me sick. Usually I use uh, a uh, wipe and that does the trick. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for a few minutes. And let those noodles soak up that water. Have a nice breakfast. 
Have you ever wanted to see an underwater video of a mountain creek? Check it out. Courtesy of the Blue Range Primitive. So yesterday when I was coming over here to the base camp, I ended up breaking my hiking pole. I think it was my fault, not the pole's fault. Uh, it's a good pole. Uh, but it was some very rugged area and I did some probably I shouldn't have done with it, but I broke it, so it's broke. So now I need to figure out how I'm gonna get it fixed where I can get it back to the trailhead. Now I could use a piece of stick or branch out here if I want to, but I'm trying to think of how can I fix this. Well, what happens now is when the pole is as I walk, as I as I pick the pole up, it separates here so it doesn't do me any good so every, then i got to put it back together and hit the ground you know then i move again and it separates so i got to figure how to separate or secure this pole so it stays together so you can see how it comes apart there as i pick it up pull it up it'll come apart so i got to figure out how to connect this well i could use duct tape but i don't have any duct tape out here i don't carry that in my little survival pouch maybe i should but i don't so the next best thing is 550 cord so what i did is i wrapped a 550 cord through this uh, little basket at the end now understand this is a short-term fix if i'm gonna be out here for a week i uh, probably won't work too well but again it'll get me back to the trailhead so i ran the 550 cord through this and uh made a little overhand knot here and on the uh, strap here I just ran it through there so I ran it through there and I take the other end of the uh, 550 cord and I shorten this rope up and I run it through this loop here and I'm making a trucker's hitch I want to torque it down where there's tension on this 550 cord here that keeps this pole together i don't want to torque it down too much because it's going to rip this out here but this is pretty strong but enough torque so when i the pole won't separate as i'm picking it up and then i'm just going to go ahead and tie some overhand knots minutes ago I heard a tree come crashing down over there so I'm always checking the area to see what's over there so I made some overhand knots and this is it right here folks my uh, short-term fix for the hiking pole staying together here I'll trim this up here but uh, when you're in a wilderness area and uh, stuff happens I'll say you got to uh, adapt and overcome and that's what I'm doing here. This should get me back to the uh, trailhead tomorrow. And again, short-term fix. And then when I get back home, I'm gonna have to buy another pair of hiking poles. So, something interesting to keep in mind. The other day, uh, when I was doing those creek crossings, my boots got wet. Uh, there's some, uh, these are Merrill Moabs, the Gore-Tex, really good hiking boots. So when I got to my base camp that evening, I went ahead and uh, put my boots next to the fire to dry out. No problem there, except one thing. Flame reached out farther than I thought it would, and it uh, singed the top here. You can see where it's separated there. Now the boot's still functional, I still use it, it's still workable, but just goes to show you that when you do put your boots, clothing, socks, etc., by a fire to dry out, be careful that you don't put them too close. Um, I thought I didn't, but like I said, that flame reached out. So now when I get back, I gotta buy me another pair. Expensive, but they're good. A lot of animal tracks 
around here. Elk, deer. Saw some wolf tracks as well too. Didn't see any bear, but I'm sure they're around here. I just haven't looked hard enough. And as I'm walking around, I also find this piece of wood here. Kind of looks like a uh, pick. I'm sure if I use it a few times, probably it'd break. But one thing for sure, the Blue Range Primitive did not let me down in reference to it being remote and rugged. Beautiful area, uh, very rugged, uh, especially walking some of the trails around here uh, with the down trees. And when you get off the trails, again, uh, just rugged area. Remote, I didn't see anybody out here. And uh, maybe there's a reason why people don't come out here. Because it's uh, sometimes difficult to navigate the trails and it is very rugged, but if you do decide to take on those challenges, you will not be disappointed. So I want to give you an overview of my adventure here in the Blue Range Primitive and where I went. As always, make sure you have your compass and a good GPS along with a topographical map. But you have 191 here, a very scenic highway. A lot of people uh, drive this highway just to see the, um, the scenery in this area. It's beautiful. But I stayed up here in Alpine, Arizona. It's not on the map because I have it folded. But I took 191 and I started from the Hannigan Trailhead. Again, there's other trailheads here. You can start from KP and some other ones here. But I started from the Hannigan in this um, pinkish uh, border here is the boundaries for the Blue Range Primitive inside here. But I started from Hannigan and I worked my way south on Trail 73. And then I got to this junction, trail junction here, which is Trail 65, dotted line there. Uh, it's a primitive trail, very rugged trail not suitable for livestock and it parallels Grand Creek so you have a lot of down trees there in some places the uh, trail is difficult to follow but if you stay on Grand Creek you should be fine oh also make sure you have water shoes uh, I had my keen sandals which I wore most of that trip on this primitive trail here on the way back because uh, you do a lot of creek crossings there. But you have access to plenty of water, but I stayed on Trail 65, and I got to this area over here, Moonshine Park, Paradise Park, and I checked this area out here, or explored this area. Beautiful area, a lot of flat ground. Good area to set up a base camp. Problem is, is you have to go a little distance here to get um, water. But I had three base camps total. I had two of them here off the uh, primitive trail and I had my um, other one, my last base camp in this area here. But the area that I saw the Mexican gray wolf was somewhere around here in my second base camp. And that's my overview of my adventure. You can do loop hikes around here. Um, you can start from other trailheads as well too. Uh, but this particular area I was kind of interested in just because uh, of this primitive trail and uh, access to water. And I was told that this area was a beautiful area to check out while I was up here. And out of the wilderness comes the American backpacker. Well, the Blue Range Primitive did not let me down. Definitely rugged and remote. If you decide to come out here and you want some information, Drop me an email and I'll try to help you out. Great adventure. I hope you enjoyed the video. I did some other videos while I was out here, uh, as well as some pictures, lots of pictures. With that said, this is Andy with the American Backpacker. Thank you for watching.